Hanna and I work in the Libraries and History Division of Charlotte County. And I want to thank you for joining me today for our newest episode of our Library Laboratory, which focuses on STEM topics. In case you don't know, STEM is an acronym for Science, Technology, Engineering, or Math. And so we like to come up with projects that you can follow along at home that will help you understand the principles of one of those fields. These STEM programs that we're doing are really targeting kids in elementary school or maybe in middle school, depending on what the projects are. But this could be fun for anyone to do, so feel free to follow along no matter what your age. So today, I'm gonna be using one of the books from the shelf right here at the library. It's part of a series called STEM Makerspace Projects, and this particular one is Makerspace Projects for Understanding Newton's Laws of Motion. So it's full of good ideas for projects that you can do at home if you want to know more. And as I said, it's just one of a series. So I saw another one that was um, looking at chemical properties of things that had like slime projects and stuff, so that could be a lot of fun to do too. But today, we are gonna focus on the laws of motion. This book has a little section, and we're gonna follow the steps right out of this section. It's project one, marble maze. Making a marble maze inside of cardboard box will help you to understand how the first law of motion works. So, if you elect to come and pick up a craft kit at the library, we're gonna have some of these available at all four of the branches in Charlotte County. So we're gonna provide a little bit of cardboard. Um, our, we're gonna try to give you these lids that have these little sides on there to help you not lose your marble. And we're gonna provide some plastic straws that you can cut up. And we're gonna provide the marble. So some other things that will help you would be a pencil or a pen, a ruler to help you make straight lines, and some glue or some tape to hold down your straws. Okay, are we ready to begin? Let's do this. It's great to read about science in books. Creating and building things can be a fun and interesting experience. Putting the two together will help you understand the ideas even better. I'm using this book to tell you about Sir Isaac Newton and his scientific laws. Physics is a branch of science. It deals with the tiniest parts of matter and with heat, light, electricity, forces, and motion. Physicists conduct experiments and observe how things behave. They try to explain how the world around us works. A scientist named Isaac Newton started studying the world. He tried to understand the behavior of things around him. He had a lot of theories. Over the years, other scientists proved these theories to be reliable. Newton's ideas gave us a better understanding of the world around us. Isaac Newton was born in England in late 1642. He was very curious about the things around him. He studied math and science and learned quickly. Newton experimented and studied until he understood the motion of objects. He summarized his understanding in three laws. Today, we call these Newton's three laws of motion. During his career, Newton invented a new kind of math called calculus and developed his theory of gravity. In 1687, he published a book, Philosophe Naturalis Principia Mathematica, about his ideas. In 1668, he designed and built a new kind of telescope. His telescope helped him prove some of his ideas about light and color. In 1705, Queen Anne of England made him a knight. After that, he was called Sir Isaac Newton. Newton's first law of motion says that if an object is at rest, it will stay at rest unless a force acts on it. If an object is moving, it will keep moving unless a force stops it. The first law is also called the law of inertia. You've probably noticed that if you kick a ball on the ground, it doesn't keep going forever. The ground exerts a force on the ball. When two objects touch and rub against each other, they exert a force on each other. For example, when the ground and the ball touch, the ground is slowing the ball down. This force is called friction. So if there were no friction, the ball would just keep going forever. That's the first law of motion. Have you ever put a ball on a flat surface, such as a floor? 
The ball won't start moving by itself. It will move only when a force acts on it. For example, you could push the ball with your hand or your foot. Suppose the ball is already moving across the floor. It'll keep moving in the same direction and at the same speed. It will only change direction or speed if a force, such as friction, acts on it. Making a marble maze will help you understand the first law of motion. The marble will sit still inside the box until you tilt the box. The force of gravity will pull the marble down an incline. If the marble hits a straw, the straw will exert a force to steer or stop the marble. While we're making our marble maze, I'm gonna just tell you briefly about the second and third law of motion as well. Newton's second law says that a larger force produces a larger change in speed or direction on a moving object. It also says heavier objects have more inertia. Suppose you have a wheeled cart loaded with heavy books like we do here at the library. That cart has a lot of mass. To get the cart rolling, you have to push it pretty hard. If you keep pushing, the cart will move faster. You're applying an increasing force and the cart is accelerating or speeding up. If there are no books on the cart, the cart doesn't have as much mass. You won't have to push it as hard. If you apply the same force that you used on the heavy cart, the lighter cart will accelerate faster. The lighter cart is also easier to stop. So the second law of motion explains that it takes a force to cause an object to start moving. Newton's third law says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Newton figured out that every time an object is pushed, it applies the same amount of force in the opposite direction. Everything you push will push you back. If the force is small, the push might not even be noticeable, but whatever is pushed always pushes back. Think about two children on floats in a swimming pool. If one child pushes the other child's float, both of them move apart in opposite directions. The same thing happens if both children push. So now that you know a little bit about the three laws, you can start observing them in action all around you. We see these laws at work in everyday life. Newton gave us an understanding of the amount of force needed to move any object. To honor his work, the term used to measure force is now called a Newton. Newton learned from physicists who lived before him, but he also did his own experiments. As you continue your study of physics, you'll learn even more. Newton inspires everyone to discover new things and have fun while doing it. He'll be remembered forever for his amazing discoveries and inventions. Have fun creating, observing, and learning.